like you want to get your stories together, right? You want to you want to prepare for these conversations. Now, it's it's you can uh, prepare for on different topics, but what's most important is you just like get some a couple general purpose stories, like a connect story, and an expand story. And I want to walk through a a, a conflict. Uh, we'll, we'll recreate a conversation that that I you know, I've overheard quite a bit recently, uh, either face to face, uh, online, uh, on on the TV. And uh, so I will be that uh, person with racially problematic uh, thoughts and concerns, and you'll be our white ally. Uh, as we go we're both, uh, are we both going to be white people? We're, we're both going to be white folks. Okay. All That's right. right. Here so we go. Audience, see us as white people for now. That's right. Here we, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> you know, uh, David, I tell you, I am just fed up with all these protests, uh, the street violence, the graffiti, all the looting I see, all these thugs running out in the streets uh, all across the country. It makes me so mad. Uh, yeah, well, I, that's, I, I got you. Tell me about like, when you see that, like tell, or, or yeah. tell me what happens for you. Like, tell me about that. You know, I, I feel like uh, it's just an excuse for a big uh, violent party. And uh, they're just uh, milking this moment for all it's worth. And uh, I, I'm so afraid I, I can't even step outside. Mm, these you, get a, you get afraid. I mean, you get, you get angry too? I get both. I get angry and I'm afraid, uh, you know, sometimes at the same time. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I know when I see, I know what you're talking about. I, when I look at some of these, uh, some of these instances that happened, like I, I, I saw a thing where these, these people, like I think it was in Malibu, they were like rushing to surf store and it's stealing like surfboards. And yeah. I've seen people, I've seen people at all sorts of high end stores stealing stuff. And um, I know what you're saying, like the, like some some of this, and and then what I understand is that some of this is like by professional thieves, like professional pe people who come in, and especially at the beginning of the protest, people do to, people are coming in and doing that, and then you got people who just like to cause chaos. So I hear you on that, like I, so so I, when I see that, it makes me it makes me frightened too. So I know what you're talking about, and and so what's interesting, I found like I see a lot too where you have these black folks whose whose neighborhoods these things are in who are trying to stop these white people from outside coming in and doing all that and so my mind goes to those nonviolent protesters so i hear you on those violent protests some of that violence is just i don't understand it but i'm wondering how do you feel about those people who are the nonviolent protesters who sometimes you see them uh stopping the violent people but other yeah. times they're just protesting how do you feel about them yeah, I just, I don't get it. I don't feel like there's really, uh, I just don't see the need for the protests in general. I mean, there's, uh, I feel like, uh, you know, I think all lives, you know, should matter. I feel like blue lives matter. And I just don't get it. I just think it's inappropriate. And uh, it's just anti, uh, it's just anti-American. So what, that's interesting. So to tell me about the experience of, with, uh, with uh, experience you had that makes you know that all this, stuff about um protesting against the cops is not necessary is this is uh, if you had a, a, an experience with cops that were were um that showed you that that stuff is crazy well i've i've always had really positive interactions uh with police personally um i've seen them do some really courageous things both on the news and and uh you know just just seeing uh brave things done on the streets and i i feel like uh um, I'm just out of touch with what, what these protesters are demanding. Uh, so right. So you've seen like you like you've seen a positive some positive stuff with cops doing. You said sure. Uh -huh. I have. Do you remember any? Uh, do you remember any one of those? What comes to mind? Uh, recently, I, I had a uh, I saw a police officer. Um, it was actually a, a helpful uh, call out to uh, to let folks know that there was a disturbance at a local school and uh, and made that known. So that uh, parents could could follow up with them, right? The right. Lockdown situation. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, there are so many good cops out there. Let me tell you. Let me tell you what happened to uh, me um, a little while ago. So I was going over visiting this this friend of mine who's black, and uh, the day I was visiting him, he was trying to do some uh, shooting on video. He put the he, he went around the block. He was in a rural area, uh, and he went around the block and he was like videoing on video videotaping himself with his camera on the car and I went to go get some coffee and when I came back um the, uh, like a cop was had pulled up on my friend and I, so I got there just as the uh, uh the cop was rolling up 
And the cop was basically talking to my friend about like somebody had called the police on him and, and he had, he, it was weird. He felt embarrassed. Like he, he would, embar he was embarrassed to have been called out. And he was, he didn't, he didn't take my friends. He didn't run his plate. He didn't take his license. He was like embarrassed. He's like, I'm sorry that I had to, um, I had to come out here, but you know, you got people calling the cops for no reason. He didn't, he didn't call them racist, but he clearly felt bad about that. And I was like, that, now that, that is an example of good professional cop behavior. There so you go. I, so I, I really get that. So that's true. Yeah. So when I think about all this, I also think about, so there's that. And I also think about other things like um, a couple of weeks ago, I was in uh, Minneapolis and I was walking around. They got that, that, mall, that, uh, those sky bridges. Yes. Asked this guy who was a black guy. He looked like one of those like Somali or Eritrean people. We had that kind of look about him and he's a younger guy, he's much smaller than me. And we walked like this, uh, past each other. And then, so I'm, I'm just getting my steps. I'm walking around almost randomly. And then I turn and I'm walking and I, I took back, I noticed this guy's behind me. And so I was like, oh, why is this guy behind me? He was walking the other way. So then I, you know, I, I'm just getting my steps or whatever. I walk around, I make a couple turns and then I notice like the guy's still behind me. And then I like, wait a minute, what's this dude doing? Like, what, why, why is he behind me? Why is this dude, this Somalia, wait a minute. Those, those people are kind of a lot of terrorists in Somalia. Like, why is this young guy behind me? He had an empty backpack too. So. Um, I'm like wondering what is this dude doing? So then I made another turn and he's still behind me. And then I was like, oh my God, what's happening with this? Like I, <laughs> I went to a whole like crazy place. And so even though I'm way bigger than this dude, I like, I started doing evasive maneuvers. Like I, I pulled to the side and I like was checking my phone and this dude go by. And so the dude goes by and then it he turns right on the same block. He turns into this like luggage store and he's clearly carrying his empty backpack to the luggage place. So, so what am, what am I doing, right? So I had turned him into some sort of terrorist, uh, into some Somali stalking terrorist. Like I basically criminalized this dude. Like I made him into some sort of a danger when he was just like a dude walking around. And so when I think about like, if I do that, if I, if I can turn some innocent guy into like a criminal, then you know, I'm doing the same thing mentally that those guys did to Am to Ahmaud Arbery, the guy like running around, right? The, 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 the Michael brothers in Georgia, or that sometimes cops do. They, 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 they have a whole image of people that is way unrelated to what they do, um, what, what, the, what they merit, because it's just suspicions. I mean, I, I criminalize this guy. So part of what I think about is, well, if I'm doing that, and other people like me are doing that, are good people doing that, then maybe this, maybe these people will come uh, protesting. Maybe there's something really happening that I just don't see as a white person. So, you know, we could talk about whether that's ever happened to you, but I'm just saying that is that uh, that's why I have some sympathy for those protests because I know racism is a real thing. Because I, I just, as an example, I just showed you. Mm. And for me, that's a great example of how the most important element of this race method that you outlined at the very beginning was you need to share a heartfelt experience that is revealing and yet truthful and true of yourself. Clearly in my example of the police officer doing something, I was making up on the fly and it didn't register at all. But the contrast is perfect. It's very potent, it's very powerful coming from you and it's very believable. Um, it, it, it almost forces somebody to give something a second look. Well, and, and just to be clear for the audience, so now now we're no longer white people. Yeah, we're, we're out of character now, we're back. <laughs> no white people. So, so just to be clear, that thing I talked about with the with the cop rolling up, that was like I, that actually happened. That was actually me filming. Like that actually really happened, right? And the thing with the turning the Somali, the terrorists talking, the terrorist Somali terrorists talking to me, that was actually me too. Like 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 that was me walking around. So I did that. So that's yeah. why I remember I said earlier, a uh, hashtag we all have the virus. Me too, right? So sure. so those are both true stories. And so part of what we teach in the um in the co in the courses in the books and in the uh, the video courses and then the online uh, co courses, uh, I hope we can talk about those a little bit before we close, is to like, you wanna get your stories together, right? You wanna, you wanna prepare for these conversations. Now, it's, it's, you can uh, prepare for on different topics, but what's most important is you just like get some, a couple general purpose stories, like a connect story and an expand story. An expand story, the best kind are the stories of like, like I just had, a story of your own racially problematic thought. And um, people have told us that it's transformative. If, like if they, if, first of all, having a plan is itself different because people get really flustered. People make racially problematic comments. They think their whole, <laughs> their whole um, 
the, uh, the goodness of their soul is on the line when they step up to it or not. And so part of what we try to do is to give them some tools to like handle that moment. And that includes just having a couple stories that have a general purpose application and then maybe practicing with other people in role plays like we just did. So you know how to use them. And then over the course of time, you can you grow your story bank, but you're already you're ready to address it. One of those quick pointers that jumped out at me was uh, you're at a dinner, a contentious conversation is beginning to erupt over the subject of race. You want to participate. You reflect by saying, I'll be right back. Just going to go uh, visit the bathroom for a minute. Just that 60 seconds, two minute period to think and get your breath together and then come back. Uh, was I think it was a great, a great point. No, it's, no that's what we, that, you know, when we, when we teach the method or we teach the race method over a period of weeks, like, you know, we have a, we have a, a cohort starting tomorrow night. Um, and so we'll teach it over six, four courses over six weeks, four sessions, but the real work is in between, right? That the, the real work is the homework, right? And so for, one of the first things to do is to figure out what is the listening tip and the relaxation methods you need, because we offer like five or six relaxation methods that people have learned to do in five minutes, but some people have gotten down to like, I can do this in a two minutes. Like you can do it on an extended bathroom trip. So you can, you gotta relax and you gotta say, well, how, how can I, what do I need to do to remember to listen? I gave you an example earlier. But yeah, you can remove yourself. People feel like I gotta respond right now. When ultimately, if they calm down, if they remove themselves for a second, go get go get that drink and come back, they might be more effective. So, so, and on some level, what this is about giving compassion and grace to yourself, right? You're not your whole being isn't on the line if you don't respond right then, right now. It, we do want people to respond. That's true, and we we even have a tool. Which anybody can go, anybody can take is a free tool. It's called the White Ally Quiz. If you go to whiteallytoolkit.com and take the White Ally Quiz, anybody can. It's a two question quiz, and it gives you. We have six. Your answers put you in one of six topologies, and you can see what's your response pattern to that. So, mm -hmm. um, and our goal is to try to say every ain't nobody doing this well, man. Right? Every every a whole bunch of people messing up. It's just a question of how are you messing up? Are you messing up? Because <laughs> you are you messing up because like you get all agitated and you rush in with no plan and then you know cause disruption? Or are you messing up because all you do is like you hear it, you feel strong inside, and then go talk to the steering wheel on the, on the way home, right? It does, <laughs> neither of those are effective. And so part of what we're trying to do is establish an atmosphere that ain't nobody doing this well. And so let us look at how we're not doing it well, and then strive towards staying calm, but still engaging, because that, that's, that's what we want people to do.